Okay guys, this is the next uh, stage of our Tetron development. What we, what I did today was create docs in GitHub and using Markdown. Markdown allows us to create uh, documents that are styled. So this, um, this guide here of mastering Markdown, guides.github.com that one tells us how to easily with text uh, use uh, enter this format to uh, like for headers insert a hash and then a space and then you're going to get an h1 tag h1 being html so it's going to be like a, a, a bold header and then you so you got one of them for one hash for h1 and two for h2 and so forth very easy to remember then emphasis like italics you would surround your your sentence with with stars on like this and lists uh, you go a star and then a, a space and then you can indent them and images you can do links uh, pretty common you probably want to do links so you're going to have the text that is displayed in square brackets followed by in normal brackets the URL of the, the site that you are linking to and then if you click on the resulting link it will open in a new window um, inline code I've used this but uh, feature because oh yeah I didn't use that one I went for the github flavored version of markdown so if you want to like one of my documents the first document is a game design document which is just text and links and so forth and emphasis and for the technical design document I want to I put in some pseudo code so for that I've gone for this this github flavored markdown where we I wanted to indent it and uh, there's this funny like tick thing there you can use I didn't use that I don't like the look of that so I went for the indenting by four spaces which is quite simple you can see there's four spaces between the edge and then the, the code and then two lots of four spaces so you what I do I control C copy them and control V control V to do the the pasting to indent and then the final rendering is as if it's some code so I didn't bother about the rest of that and this is my repo and I created the docs folder directly by actually creating a new file clicking there we can see there so if you type in something like this and then slash it's going to start creating a, a new folder and then you can add the file name and for a markdown document you go the file name dot md or dot file name dot markdown but i'll cancel that because i don't want to do that oh no what's going on okay yeah we're out of there so let's have a look at the docs i've created click there and we have a gdd.md which is a game design document and tdd which is a technical design document so this is going to help us think and formulate our ideas about what we are actually trying to do the game design document is explaining what it is what is this thing we're making it's a clone of tetris and saving me some time of writing a lot of stuff i linked to a wikipedia article which has a lot of explanation about the standard tetris so it's basically this kind of thing we're going to implement and these shapes and lots of information about how it works how it's usually scored and lots of things if 
for reference. So that leaves us with just a few details that we should decide on what we're going to do, such as which controls are going to operate the game, like the space bar for the hard drop and left arrow to move left. The, the, the arrow keys, basically the, the space bar uh, and up is going to rotate clockwise. And then how do you rotate anti-clockwise? Oh, how about holding shift and then up? Just some idea I had. And then, but also we need some buttons, which will, will there'll be physical buttons that you'll have to mouse click on for things such as new game and pause and turning music on and off. And then we can describe our scene elements. We haven't done any visual design in an external package or pasted an image of what we want it to look like here because I think the best idea is to go into the Godot engine and start creating it visually in the engine. So we don't really know exactly what it's going to look like yet, but we know we can describe what elements we want to have. Like there's going to be have to, have to be a grid to contain all the game pieces that drop into it. And it's usually called a matrix, or I'm just going to call it a grid. And decide on the initial size of it, 10 by 20. And this could actually be dynamic. You know, we could like input values as constants to define the size and play around with different sizes of the grid. But for now, we're going to start off in our spec of 10 by 20. And we're going to display statistics. So it needs the high score or nothing there until there is actually a high score. This will like, allow the player to have something to uh, try to aim for, to try to beat. And then we've got our level on 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or whatever, up to 10 probably. And then our current score and how many lines the player has removed. And then the next shape will be like an image of the shape that is about to come after the current shape that is falling or the tetromino is the actual name, but I don't want to type that into my code. I'm, I'm just going to call them shapes and a game over banner, which will be invisible until the game's actually over. Maybe to start with, it's probably just going to be a simple thing that just says game over on top, laid over the top of the game. But we, yeah, we could make that more fancy, you know, with an animation and some kind of dramatic effect. And a new game button, click that to start the game and maybe disable it during the game until it's finished. Pause button, maybe you, the phone's ringing, you don't want to interrupt your game, but you can pause it and then go there, come back and pause again to unpause or other to start playing again. And there'll be a music track, but it may be very annoying or you're in the office, lunch break, you don't want to have music blaring out, so you could have an on-off toggle of the music. And our shapes, these are going to be the same as defined in the, the well, as you expect the L and the T and stuff, you know, the, the cube. But these are going to be, a, I think there's going to be a, a special scene where we create our shapes. I'm going to make it like flexible, so we're going to edit them in the editor, create the shapes in grids, arranging like tiles of uh, images to create them. And then I'm actually going to have code that will kind of compile them into like, there's going to be like the visual shape and then there's going to be a, like an object of data representing that shape to tell the code where there are pieces in a localized grid map, the color of it and the probability of it occurring. So, so there'll be an object and the, of data with, well, the object with uh, properties and uh, a visual image of it. Yeah, I've already experimented with this and come up with a really cool idea for doing that as a scene to create shapes. And, uh, 
scoring yeah we need to decide how do we assign scores so single line 100 points remove two lines you get 200 so you incentivize to try to resist like eliminating one line at a time but try to go for more like up to four then you're going to get 800 points for that that's a big reward and saving loading yeah we're going to save our high score and when the game loads it's going to load a previous high score if if the one was saved and then at the end of the game it's going to check is there a new high score and if so it will save it to the high score file i think for the simplicity we're just going to have one player one high score that kind of thing rather than a league table and sounds let's have some sounds play a background music loop and then have the like we said before the, the ability to disable it or mute it and when the shape is placed it's fell down to the bottom and can't go any further we're gonna ping or something like that bleep whatever and then clear the lines we want to have some kind of like jingle to play there and an animation when that happens when we clear the lines make them flash or something spin around and that kind of stuff so coding this it'll cover quite a bit of stuff which will be useful for people learning godot engine i think and then the other document is delving into the technical side this will help us like create the code so i'm thinking a lot a big feature will be timers so we're going to have a timer rather than the usual game loop that operates as process delta every frame this is kind of a slow thing in tetris it goes ding 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 move 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 you know so we, we don't need 60 frame per second updates um so we're gonna have a ticker timer ticker that that changes depend the 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 period of which uh, depends on the level we're at. So at level one is pretty slow, maybe one second per movement down of the, the shape. And then as the level goes up, it goes faster. And then when you hold the key, say left or right, to move the, the piece, it kind of like moves a, a step at a time, but fairly quickly. So we're going to have this repeat delay timer for moving left and right and rotation will be like taps of the rotation button to make it rotate on each tap and then there's another timer we need for leveling up after a certain period of time the difficulty should increase so we're gonna increase the level until it hits the maximum level of say 10 when everything is maniacally fast and then the state of the game is it's pretty simple we're gonna have like it's either like stopped and then you're gonna press the new game button to make it start and then we're playing and then during play we we may want to pause it so we're gonna be able to there'll be a pause state and then you toggle that and it'll be unpaused and playing again so we, this would be so simple that we're just going to have a couple of boolean bars playing called playing and paused to store this state and then everything's going to be driven by events there are two types of events there are input events like the user is tapping at the keyboard clicking on buttons with the mouse or the timers are looping in it signaling that they've they just gone through a period of the time loop so here we have the pseudo code for handling all of these events we got a new game button press so we reset the game start the ticker going and then set the status flag of playing to be true yes we are playing now and then the ticker is a, a timer a time ticker timer each time it ticks we go through the motions of moving the shape down if you get stuck I it's finished moving down can't go any further we're going to add the shape to the grid matrix that will be like a, a, a data item storing the status of the whole grid 
that which will allow us to easily check with code where there are completed lines and if there are we remove them and then we're going to update the score accordingly if there's one full line two lines and so th so forth and if it's the end of the game i.e the stack has reached the top of the screen you know it's overflowing off the top then we're going to stop the ticker stop this and we stop playing and display game over and compare the score to the high score and if it's higher than the high, current high score, we're going to save the new high score. If we're just going down, down, oh, hold on. If we're in the end of, if we're stuck, if we're end of the game, if we're not at the end of the game, we're going to add a new shape to the top, and that starts dropping down. And here we have the pseudocode for the, the keys: left press, move to the left. Well, we, we can't necessarily move left unless there's a space for the shape to move into so we're going to have code to detect how if it's possible to move into the space where we want to go to so that's going to be some kind of chunk of code we need to create it's going to say i want to move there to the x y position on the grid is it possible yes or no if we can, we will move. If not, we can't. And the same for right breast and rotate. It's the same kind of thing. And then down just press. This is where we want to drop quickly. So we're going to change the ticker speed to make it operate the movement downwards of the shape faster. Then you take your finger off this button and it will revert it back to normal and space just press this is where we basically do a hard drop so set it to a very fast drop speed so the thing will just go down no 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 well there's no need to stop this it will detect when it's got to the bottom nowhere to go and then kind of reset later after updating the score and so forth and page up pressed or this is to increase the level, very simple, just up the level if we're not already at the max. So with each press of that button, they will go up, 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 or, and the level up timer will cause this to increase as well. And pause pressed, we're going to toggle the pause, and then the pause flag will be examined during the movement logic. And if we are paused, then it will ignore the movements commands. And the music on off toggle, very simple, just toggle the music player, make it active or not. And there's some major functions that we we'll need, check for a valid move. As I mentioned before, we got to, like if we want to move left, we got to check that the shape can actually fit into the next, next group of, uh, cells to the left of where we are now and check for completed lines that will scan the, the grid and add up the number of lines that are complete and remove them and so forth add shape to grid this is when we we're going to add a new one to drop at the top of our screen so it's going to select one based on it on its uh, it's uh, like a uh, we call it the probability and add it at some random position across the top edge and then start dropping it down so that is the tdd doc yep so this is the where we are now ready to start some coding